Hi, and welcome to the Lady T Show. I'm your host, Lady T, and I want to thank you for joining me today for our wonderful, wonderful show entitled Infidelity, Do I Leave or Do I Stay? And what does the Bible say? Before I introduce my panelists, I want to uh, let you know later in the show, we're going to hear some music from Tron Powell. You may remember Tron. He was here with his little girls during Christmas, and they sounded so angelic. So we're going to hear from the daddy now. We're going to hear where they got those vocals from. Also, so I'm going to give you a chance to win that $25 Visa card that's going to be later on in the show. But I want to hop right into this topic. I've gotten so many texts from my viewers saying uh, you need to really do a one-hour show because we don't have a lot of time. So we want to hop right on it. My panelists this evening... Um, Ritonia Lindsay, she's from Rocky Mount, right? Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And she's also a school teacher and she's the founder of PIC. PIC is pretty, Prettier, in color. Prettier in Color. Tell us about it. Prettier in Color is a mentoring program for girls ages 9 to 16. Mm -hmm. And the goal of the program is to um, get, let girls see just who they are in God mm -hmm. and by exposing them to different things, um, different um, ways of life mm -hmm. and show, just letting them know that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Wow, I love that. I love that. So you can get in contact with Ratonia through me. I'll give you that contact information at the end of the show. Also, Mr. Howie Stevens, he's from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, father of three very beautiful girls and very tall girls, too. <laughs> How you doing, Howie? I'm, doing fine. I'm glad that you came along. Welcome, Tony. And last but not least, Miss Jasmine Dozier. She's also from Tarboro, North Carolina. Yes, right? Living correct. in Tarboro, North Carolina. Devoted wife and mother of three. three mother yeah. of three. So we're going to hop right into this. We're talking about infidelity tonight. And infidelity is defined as being unfaithful to one's spouse or partner. And, you know, we're talking about man and woman partner. But um, we want to talk about that from a Christian perspective. So, my first question that I want to get into, we know the Bible gives us some indications as to uh, fornication, adultery. So we've established the fact infidelity is wrong. Right. Right. It's not right, but it's wrong. So some people will say, um, if you didn't do such and such or if you did do such and such, I wouldn't have cheated. Is there a such thing as being driven to cheat or being driven to infidelity? Well, and a dead silence yeah. falls over <laughs> the no panel. Question. No question. <laughs> is, is, is there a such thing to that, of, of that, being driven to cheat? Not really. I don't mm. think so. I, well, people may say so, but uh, I really think it's something that is in, in you. Wow. Um, and it may come from like a form or a habit. Uh, you may have grew up in that same household, so, mm -hmm. you know, how they say kids imitate their parents and stuff. Right, so, right. So I would like to say it's really uh, you are you are grow growing grow into it. You grow mm -hmm. into it. So it's something that's in you. It's yeah. not something that you just all of a sudden wake up one morning and say, "Ooh, I'm gonna cheat today." You, you're saying that you just kind of grow into it. Yeah, so what about you guys? Is that a such thing as being driven to cheat? I think it's a choice that you make. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's if you um, get to the point of being unfaithful to the person that you're with, I think that you, um, it starts off as something that's is like lust. Mm -hmm. um, you start off, um, you know, thinking about other people and you begin to think on those things in your mind and then you eventually will act on it if you don't um, block those thoughts that's out. Right. And because thoughts becomes things if, right. if not interrupted. So mm -hmm. I think that it's a choice that you make. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody is driven that's to right. doing that. And, and like, that's biblical what you just mm -hmm. said. When you think about it, you act on it. So if, if your spouse came to you and said, well, you know, you nagged me for five years. Oh, well, so because you nagged me for five years, I just decided to go out and cheat on you. Is How would you accept that? Is that something I mean, is that an acceptable thing? Would you begin to think in your mind, maybe I did nag too much, or maybe I, you know, how does that work? Um, I feel like the nagging, we all have issues. Right. We all have things that we do need deliverance from. Mm -hmm. um, we got things that carry on with us for years and years and years. And if you're not in a good church home, where you can be taught mm -hmm. to be delivered and get those core issues dug up, right. then 
it's going to be the small things that drive a spouse away, man or female. It mm -hmm. will drive you away. Wow. But then that issue is with yourself. Right. It's not the actual person that's nagging you. So mm -hmm. that means you need that means you would need to reevaluate yourself. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something that's within yourself. And I like what you said, core issue. There's a core issue there. So it, it could be low self-esteem or, or anything like that. So when you when somebody says you drove me, I think that's kind of playing the, the blame game. Mm -hmm. you know, it's an I wanna, excuse. Yeah. It's an excuse. Exactly. And you, you're trying to blame somebody for doing wrong. Exactly. So um, people married for many, many years, 10, 20, 30 years. It, it's hard to understand, well, what happened all of a sudden that this person wanted to cheat? I mean, sh can you sh shed some light on that for us? Married for so long, if there was an incident of infidelity, would you say, well, I, just because they were married for that long, should they stay? Should they work it out? You know. Well... It's two types of infidelity. Okay. There's the sexual and okay. there's an emotional. Okay. And I guess it depends on the person. Um, the Bible says if the, God will only forgive you if you if it's a sexual. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can leave your spouse and you have to grant them, give them a certificate of divorce. Mm -hmm. But then you have emotional where you got some women that are in marriages and their spouse did cheat, and a lot of Christian marriages, a lot of women and men don't leave. Wow. They stay. They stay. Because they've been taught that. Mm -hmm. They might not necessarily know that that's true, mm -hmm. but it's been passed down from generation. You can't leave your husband. Mm -hmm. That's not right. You got to stay when you got kids. You, you just can't do that. And then in the back of a person's mind that's very emotional and still, again, to the mm -hmm. core, no deliverance, then they're dealing with, oh, look, I got to go to check your cell phone. I need mm -hmm. to check your email. Uh, where you going? Where you being? How long you going? Wow. Who you going with? Mm -hmm. And then it's just like you drive yourself insane. Exactly. So, I mean, where do you draw the line? Exactly. So is it okay? I mean, no. you said it's with being with the Christian in the Christian community because they're taught, you know, you need to stay. Is that okay to stay when you know that there's a problem there, there's an underlying issue? Is it okay to stay? I mean, is it right to say, well, you need to stay with that person? Well, so for me, uh, you can say uh, people, people can look, look on the outside, right? And they may say, well, you've been married so many years, you mm -hmm. have two, two or three kids. Right, right. Uh, you need to stay, you need to keep your family. But those people, they're not with you 24 hours a day. They're mm -hmm. not, they're late at night, right. early in the morning time. Mm -hmm. um, that's still in your mind, so you really, you had to do what best for yourself. Mm -hmm. Even though you have kids and stuff, of course you're going to you, you gonna think about your family. Right. Uh, I'm going to keep my family together, but mm -hmm. you still got to do what best for you because you really not helping your family if y'all sing in the same house and mm -hmm. you're not talking, she's exactly. not talking. So, yeah. right. so for me, it's best to do what's in your heart right. uh you can listen to people but you don't need to take everyone's advice you mm -hmm. got to sit down pray on it mm -hmm. definitely pray. and what best for you because like right. i said you got to be with yourself 24 hours no one right. else does right and and you said something else that that's really important there he said you got to pray on it that's a very important thing but are we listening to too many people we've got family over here we've got friends over here we've got co-workers in front of us then we've got uh, television talk shows and we got the lady T show are we listening to too many people when it comes to making important decisions like this I would I would say yes if you have too many people in your ear you get confused and mm -hmm. you don't know what you should be doing and bottom line is you should be listening like he said you should be praying because the ultimately the person that you the voice you need to hear is from God right. as to how you should um, what what direction you should take um, you need to get all the other voices right. out of your head because it will confuse you it will confuse you yes. we don't want you to be depressed and unhappy and confused too to add on to your problems exactly. and how we brought up another good point people will say you should stay for the kids if you have kids involved then you definitely definitely want to stay involved in that situation so with you guys you know with kids being involved is that something you would do well I'll stay with him for the kids or I'll stay with her for the kids okay I'm gonna get to speak for myself mm -hmm. uh, cuz it's happened to me and the first thought that part in your mind is 
well, you know what, I need to stay for my kids. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to break my family up. Uh, they are used to seeing mom and dad together. And that's your first thought, and you, you know, you are a human being, and you sure have that thought, but as you sit down and think and right. time pass, you, you got to say, well, I love my kids, but I got to do what's best for me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can help my kids out. Right. So, you know, so that's a tough question. It's a tough it's question. It's a tough question. But a better you means a better father for Correct. for the kids. Exactly. Right. So, and, and you guys were getting ready to I come I was going to say the same thing. Not only that, you have to think about your children. What are they seeing? If you are, if you know that your spouse is being, is being unfaithful, then I, there's going to be some tension in that house. Mm -hmm. And the kids pick up on those things. We yes. think that we are hiding things if we close the door, right. um, that they don't hear you arguing or hear you fussing but they do and that's yes. affecting them yeah. and what type of example are you setting for them what are they going to grow up thinking that mm -hmm. this is the way this is supposed to be right right so and you she's talking about touching on the generational curses because mm -hmm. you don't want to continue to pass this on to little tony or you know so you want to break that chain right where it is and you were getting ready to come in as well Jazzy. yeah I, I agree with howie um it's definitely a hardest choice, mm -hmm. and you would have to make that choice. Um, but praying and having positive people in your life, people that have been through things in their marriage, definitely can help you. Um, mm -hmm. You can take the positive things out of people's marriages that you've been in and mm -hmm. not take those generations and destroy another generation um, and just leave the bad. You just got to mm -hmm. know how to do that and praying is the best way because yeah. sometimes you'll pray so much and before you know what god has just removed yeah. exactly. all the negative out of your life and you're just like wow to god be the glory mm -hmm. exactly and and you know um i want to ask this um why is it we we in the christian community we have so many divorce so many divorces so many instances of divorce um what do you think is is pushing that and driving that in the christian community well, for one, a lot of people are getting married because they have babies. Okay. That's one thing because they grew up in church and it's just like, oh, you, you're pregnant now. You, you got to marry them now. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta, you're gotta you going to be set down and this, that, and the third. and mm -hmm. Or, you know, a lot of people, they getting married and not being experienced and not living your life and not checking backgrounds and seeing mm -hmm. if you're really compatible and mm -hmm. praying to God for God to send you the person that is supposed to be with you instead of your flesh just choosing. Right. So right. that's another thing that causes a lot of divorces in the Christian um, community. Very flesh just so. choosing. And even though we're Christians, you still get in the flesh. And you of know, course. Of course. you're not blind. You can see. You can see what you like and what you want, and then you let that end up choosing for you. So w did you have something you want to add to that? Um, well? I was just going to say, too, just not um, – sometimes we're not um, receiving the word or we're not in a place where we're receiving word that's helping us to understand what's going on mm -hmm. in our relationships. Um, having a spiritual mentor, your pastor, that can um, – that is um, mentoring you mm -hmm. and um, allowing you to be in situations or talking to her about things right. that may be going on, that helps. Right. Um, so and know. if you have a pastor that is not rooted, grounded, mm -hmm. connected with God, mm -hmm. they can't really help you. Exactly. Right? They've got to have a true relationship yeah, with God in, their, in order to help you out of your situation. Now, not only with cheating, but um, I know we're talking about infidelity, but not only with that, you notice that people, when they get caught, it seems like they're, oh, so sorry. They're very apologetic. Mm -hmm. I've been caught now. I'm very apologetic. Do you think maybe if they hadn't been caught, of course, they probably would have just kept going, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Why a lot of people look at it like, well, if I can have my cake and eat it too and get away with it, right. I'm going to do it. And that's whether you're in the world or a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it can go both ways. And, you know, just... Being sorry means that you you should have never done it. Yeah. I don't think that you're sorry once you're doing it. You're just sorry that you were caught. Mm -hmm. And the consequences, a lot of people don't think that, they, a lot of people think they're invincible and they don't have to answer to anybody. I can get away with it. I've been doing it and never had a deliverance in a mm -hmm. Christian marriage mm -hmm. and never had that deliverance. And now, you know, I'm doing it and I've been getting away with it or she let this slide or mm -hmm. he let this slide and, and after a while, it just builds up and builds up until it's just like a disaster. Now the home is destroyed. The kids are here. Right. Everything is going wrong. So, I mean, 
That's mm-hmm. just, I just believe, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. until yeah. you get caught, you're not sorry. You're not sorry. You're not sorry. And you, you, Jasmine, you mentioned something earlier that I want to go back to. You mm-hmm. talked about sexual infidelity and emotional infidelity. Mm-hmm. So when we go back to that, a person that goes on a date or, you know, they didn't really, there was no sexual uh, involvement, but they just go on a date or, you know, would you consider that to be cheating? They're actually trying to make an emotional connection with someone else by spending a lot of time with them. So they go out on a date or they go out to eat. Would you consider that cheating? I know people have different definitions of cheating, but would you consider, in your book, would you consider that to be? Well, so yes. Let me answer, answer that. Uh, you may start doing that mm-hmm. for uh, like one, two, three. You keep on counting. Mm-hmm. It's going to add up, keep on adding up, keep mm-hmm. on adding up. You may start off just little. Mm-hmm. Well, y- y'all get going out to eat, need someone to talk to, then mm-hmm. you're going to go to something mm-hmm. else, going to something else. So right. if if you start doing wrong, you're going to keep on doing wrong. Mm-hmm. You no, know, you can't do wrong and think you're going to do right. You, you know, you keep on doing wrong, you keep doing wrong, wrong, wrong. So mm-hmm. I said if you do that, that just like open the door. <laughs> you're going right. to open the door a little while and while, so you shouldn't do it at all. No. Mm-hmm. And not only that, the Word of God lets us know that if you have l- lust, mm-hmm. If you have with your eyes, right, then that's yes. the same yeah. as he, he treats that the same as adultery or the yes. same as infidelity. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, even if you look at it as a little thing of, oh, I'm just going out, I'm just talking to right. her. But you make, you make a connection with someone when you start sharing things. Mm-hmm. Because more than likely, if you're going out with them, you're having conversations about what's going on wrong with your marriage, what's right. not working, or with your relationship. And you begin to share emotional things. Mm-hmm. And that forms some a, a tie some type of tie so you're forming a bond with that Mm -hmm. person and that's not something that you want to get into because it's how we said it will lead one thing will begin to lead to another to another to another so um we want to help our viewers out there and this is a a christian show but my platform is to provide ministry to you all in our community i want you all to kind of touch on what people should look for when you are with someone before you commit to them, what should they look for? What are those telltale signs or what are the red flags that they should look for? Too many times we ignore the red flags because of what we, we really want to see. So what are the red flags that they should look for to let them know this person may be prone to infidelity? If you knew them being in a relationship before, mm-hmm. they were in a relationship with you and they weren't faithful mm-hmm. to that person that they were with before, don't don't think that they're going to be faithful, faithful to, to you. you. Wow. And that goes back to how we're saying if you start something wrong, then the more wrong will be done. But if you saw, if you start something wrong, it's going to end up wrong. Mm-hmm. Something that doesn't start right, it's not definitely not going to end right. And just like she said, if you see the signs in the beginning and you know what type of person you are, why set yourself up for the heartbreak, the emotional type, the, you know, why even put yourself out there like that? You know, just be strong. You got to pray mm-hmm. and just stay focused. Right. Yeah. Stay focused on the word of God. Yeah. Is, is it true when they say, well, once you're a cheat, you're always a cheat? Is, no, is that a I don't. Thing? I don't think once you're a cheat, you're <laughs> always a cheat. You mm-hmm. know, um, you could have been that way before. But if you if you're praying and you're getting word and you're getting a deliverance and you're really trying to grow as a Christian, then I believe that if you were a cheater, you could stop. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you want to stop, because God mm-hmm. can do anything. Wow. So if you want it, He will give it to you. Mm-hmm. He said He'll give you the desires of your heart. So right. why not take the cheating away? So so a question for you, Jasmine. Somebody that's a known. Um, a known cheater. E- every relationship, he was a cheater. But all of a sudden, now he's with you. He's a Christian. I'm a reformed person. Would you trust him to not cheat? And I'm praying, and God sent him to me. Mm-hmm. Yes, you would. Yes, if we're both walking that walk, and we're getting some good teaching, some word-based teaching, mm-hmm. and you know we're both growing together, then yes, because just the same, like I said earlier. Everybody has issues, right. and who am I to judge? Mm-hmm. You know your past, and if I'm I'm watching you grow, then why not trust you? Right. Yeah. So this is the same principles you're insto- instilling in your kids. Yes. Right. Of and, course. And hoping that and they're listening. <laughs> hoping that they're listening. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, praying that they're listening. Not hoping. I'm praying mm-hmm. that they're listening, because 
you don't want to go out here and make some of the same mistakes that I made. So you, as a parent, you try to tell them mm -hmm. things that you've done so that they're not making the same mistakes. And, you know, I was a child once, and when you, you know, your parent is telling you, oh, don't do that, don't mess with that guy, you know, he's no good, because they see things that we don't see, but right. when it comes from my parents, you're just like, I don't want to hear that. Right. But if it comes from somebody else, mm -hmm. you're more shunned to listen to it. But I don't believe that, you know, kids of the same age can teach each other something because right. they're both learning. Right. They don't exactly. know anything. Mm -hmm. So how can the blind lead the blind? That's exactly. the, you, you can't get anywhere doing that. Wow. So the best yeah. thing is to do is to listen to your parents when they give you advice on how to seek God and how God is supposed to send you in. You're supposed to be virtuous and getting yourself together because you can't go to somebody and present yourself jacked up right, right. and expect God to send you the jacked man that up. you prayed for. You don't want to present yourself <laughs> jacked up. That's a good <laughs> word. I like that. I like that. So you got to get yourself Together. together as yeah you you really do you got to be confident you got to have high self esteem you mm -hmm. just got to be a go getter you got to encourage yourself sometime and just pray to God that right. you know for every issue that you got in you and especially with the heart and we were talking about that too you know today the heart mm -hmm. when you is get that heart examined and you letting God examine and not wow. the people mm -hmm. then God can go in and do if you ask him he can do what you ask him. Wow. I mean, you can, he can do what you ask him, definitely. This is awesome. And we're going to try to uh, get our panelists back, but we are out of time. Yes, it happens so quickly. <laughs> we're out of time, but thank you so much, guys. We're going to take a break, but before we do, I want to give you that number to call for that Visa card, $25 Visa card. We're going to bless somebody on tonight with a $25 Visa card. And uh, last week, Jane, last show, I should say, James Estelle, I believe, uh, was it Estelle? He may have lived on Estelle Street. Never mind. Before I mess it up, his name was <laughs> name was James, and he won the uh, movie tickets. But we told him, just give us a couple of weeks because we have some out-of-town sponsors. So we will definitely get your prize to you. But tonight, we want to bless somebody. $25 Visa card. Give us a call at 252 Five six seven eight three three one. That's two five two five six seven eight three three one. And as always, we are looking for caller number seven two five two five six seven eight three three one. We'll be right back to hear Tron ministering to you in song. I'm Lady T. Remember me? From the Morning Dew Show. Now listen, I have a brand new show, The Lady T Show. It's going to be airing second and fourth Sundays right here on WIG TV at 6.30 p.m. Not just your ordinary talk show, but a talk show to help you find the ministry in life's issues. I'm excited and I know you are, so join me second and fourth Sundays right here on WIG TV at 6.30 p.m. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Are you ready to fight? And anything the devil throw at me, I shall bounce back from it. Who is on the Lord's side? You got a bounce back anointing. This is not a test. This is an actual emergency. Apostle Emma Speaker Dickens and the Kingdom Empowerment Ministries Incorporated family invites you to become a part of Kingdom Empowerment today. Whether you're young, old, married, or single, rich, or poor, Kingdom Empowerment will bring out the ministry in you. Kingdom Empowerment is home to many ministries in-house to serve you, including GWAP, CWAP, Youth Alliance, Creative Dance Ministry, Covenant Marriage Ministry, C Singles Ministry, Anointed Music Ministry, Way of Life, Motherhood, My Brother, Brothers Keeper, and many, many more. Apostle Emma Speaker Dickens invites you to experience not church as usual, but church unusual, where there is healing, deliverance, and an apostolic prophetic anointing like never before. Headquartered in Scotland Neck, North Carolina, Kingdom Empowerment Ministries has several locations in Eastern North Carolina to serve you. Call us today at 252-826-5029 or visit us on the web at kiminc.org. That's 252-826-5029 or visit us on the web at kiminc.org. This is not a test. This is an actual emergency. 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 Thank you 
so much for watching tonight. And uh, we want to remind you to join us back here every second and fourth Sunday at 6.30 p.m. I was trying to wait for the name of that winner, but we'll announce the winner during the next show. Some of my viewers that are out there watching and let me know every time. I'm going to be watching you, girl. Miss Teresa Taylor of Rocky Mount. I know she's watching. Also, Miss Ethel May Shaw. I believe this is my aunt. I love you, Auntie Ethel. And uh, Danita Turner Williams from Virginia, Andre Brooks from Virginia, and Vernon Mines Jr., all from Virginia. They are watching iconic citizens in their community. So hopefully, we'll get them to call in um, and talk to us, hopefully, in the future. So uh, we're looking for sponsors also. And I'm trying to hurry up so we can listen to Tron. So we're looking for sponsors. We want you to email us at ladytshow at gmail.com. That's L-A-D-Y-T show at gmail.com. want to thank all, my spon all of my uh, panelists tonight. And just remember, seek God's will for what you should do. And as our pastor, Apostle Emma Dickens, preaches, the choices we make will determine the life that we live. Thank you, Lady T. It was such an awesome job on tonight. Thank God for all of the panelists and all of you that are viewing on tonight. But how many of you know that even after you've gone through such a hard situation in such a thing, such as cheating and divorce, there comes a time where God will give you an anointing to move forward. So we're asking God to bless us all with that on this, on this life-changing situation that you're all going through. Amen. going back I'm moving ahead here to declare with you my past is over in you all things are made new surrender my life to Christ I'm moving moving forward oh. What a moment you have brought me to such a freedom, Lord. I have found in you, you're the healer who made all things new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going back. Yeah, to declare with you. My past is over in you. I think the main new surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, oh, oh. You have risen. All power in your hand. And you've given me, he's going to give you a second chance. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Chiropractic Center, and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mountain area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day, and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't arise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts. It does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great when they leave. Farrington's Auto Works and Collision Center is a full-service repair facility and collision center. 
engine and transmission repair replacement, tune-ups, brakes, and air conditioning.